All right, so this is just going to be a quick video showing how to upgrade or replace the hard drive with an SSD on this Dell Inspiron 3593. All right, we're gonna use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You wanna keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. All right, and then we're just gonna pop the bottom cover off and install the SSD. I'll also go over uh, quick things like the RAM and the battery, but mainly this is just to show how to swap out the hard drive with an SSD. And also, um, uh, you can, if you're doing this, you'll either want to clone your hard drive to the SSD first, or if you're doing a clean install, then you'll wanna make sure that you have a Windows USB uh, installing drive. Um, if you don't know how to do that, just let me know. I have a video that pretty much shows you how you can uh, install that or create a bootable USB. Your USB will have to be, I believe, at least 8 gigs. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, pretty straightforward. Okay, if this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. These screws near the hinge side, they actually stay locked in place. So yeah, just leave them there. All right, so we're gonna open this up and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna pop the bottom cover off. Just get your fingernails or a plastic pry tool in between that cover there, all right? Then what you do is you pull with your fingernails and push with your thumbs, just like this. Very easy, okay? It's a lot easier if you have fingernails. Um, some people don't like growing their fingernails and some people are like, well, just use pry tools, but this works way easier, okay? As you can see, we can easily pop this whole thing out. We got the front and the sides out. Now what we're gonna do, we're gonna kind of wiggle this as we lift it and the back clips should release. We're gonna release those. Then we're gonna go over here and do the same thing. And there we go. Bottom cover off really easily. Okay, it's not really dusty or anything in here. It's actually pretty clean inside. You can see there's two sticks of RAM. RAM, just like every other model, you pull the two metal tabs to the side, it pops up, and you can see here, all right, PC42666V, very standard RAM. You can upgrade this to whatever size you want. Just make sure it's PC42666V, and that should be compatible, all right? Um, there's a chance that it'll work with other, um, types of DDR4 or PC4 RAM as well, but uh, that's what I used. Oh, this stick of RAM was kind of popping up, so I'm gonna get that clicked back in. All right, battery is right here, YRDD6. Um, pretty straightforward, I'm not gonna remove it, but there are four screws here. You can remove the four screws and then you can pop this out. Um, I'm wondering if I should use a regular SSD here. Um, uh, actually, I believe this supports an M.2 PCIe NVMe. All right, keyboard connectors here. On some models, they have keyboard backlight. Um, then you have the touchpad connector here, and you have the fingerprint reader or connector here, and then you have this I.O. board connector, which I believe is for this um, USB port SD card slot, and the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery, whatever you wanna call it. Um, power button cable goes over here and connects down here, okay. There's this optical disk drive connector here, but this model doesn't have an optical disk drive. Instead, they put this here. Okay, CPU solder to the motherboard, fan connectors right there. Um, DC jack charge port connectors right here. This one is kind of a push wiggle out connector that you just pull back. Um, you do have to remove the uh, hinge or lift the hinge. There's three screws. Then you can kind of pull the hinge up and open it to get that out. And then you also have the wireless card here. One screw, it pops up like the RAM. This plastic thing slides back off and comes out. And the tails to disconnect, you pull from the, or the antennas to disconnect, you pull from the tails. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and remove the hard drive here. There's four screws holding this in place. I'm gonna replace it with the uh, two and a half inch SATA SSD. Um, there, again, there is a M.2, I believe that's a PCIe NVMe slot here which you can use as well, but because um, I told the customer I'm replacing the hard drive with an SSD, I'm gonna use the same form factor, all right? We're gonna lift this up here, then we can go ahead and use our fingernail here to pull this connector out. Sorry if that's too small to see. There you go. I use my fingernail at the edge here and I push, push with my finger here while I pull with my thumbnail and you can see we can just pop that connector out. All right, it is held in with this plastic 
nub here that's sticking out. So we're going to have to lift this up and then we're going to pull this out. Be careful with that cable because it is somewhat short. Um, this aluminum foil thing shouldn't be underneath the battery like that. So whoever did this did this wrong. So I'm taking this one screw out so I can lift this up and hopefully I'll be able to um, get this foil thing out the right way. Okay, it's stuck to the battery. There we go. All right, so it's supposed to be folded out like this. Okay, I don't know why it was um, folded underneath the battery. I'm gonna get this screw back in. And if you're wondering, the battery disconnects on two spots here and here. If you're replacing the battery, I would actually disconnect it here by grabbing that connector and pulling it out. Um, but you do have to take the battery screws out. Okay, there's four screws holding um, the hard drive into place. So we're gonna remove those four screws. Okay. And this is a one terabyte spinning drive, but the drive is bad. So we're gonna remove that. Okay, once you remove the four screws, you should be able to push the hard drive out. And it comes out just like that, all right? I'm gonna set that aside. We're gonna now get the replacement hard drive or SSD. This is a one terabyte SSD. If you need help finding a good SSD, just let me know. But uh, yeah, all right. So we'll get the hard drive out. I'm gonna put the other hard drive in the box here so I can give that back to the customer and they can do data recovery if they need to. Okay. the box there we go. all right so the SSD make sure we get this lined up the right way okay and just get it into this little box we are gonna put the four screws back in here okay just like this get those four screws in And I just loosely fit the screws first to make sure everything lines up and then you can go ahead and tighten them all down. Okay, just in case you were wondering why I didn't like tighten it that tight. Okay, now we can go ahead and tighten these all in. All right, next thing we're gonna do, make sure you hold on to the connector here. All right, so we're gonna line this up, get this in place, okay, and then hold the connector in and push the drive into place there we go drop this in my sister's calling me so I need to hurry up with this thing all right let's get these screws all back into place pretty straightforward nothing really out of the ordinary and then we're gonna boot our Windows USB installer by pressing F12 when the computer boots up okay and that's how we'll install Windows go let's zoom out here we'll get the bottom cover back on again this was just a quick video showing how to get that stuff in real real quick all right we're gonna get this all lined back up all right now I have it facing the other way we're gonna just push everything down snap everything into place very simple straightforward okay I'm gonna flip it back over this way so that the screws that we have lined up will go back in in the pattern we removed them okay and that's pretty much it. Again, we are going to boot into our Windows USB installer by pressing F12 and then um, it'll let us choose a temporary boot device and that's how we'll install Windows back onto the computer. There's another option if your computer is working fine and you just want to speed it up with an SSD, um, then you can actually clone the hard drive beforehand to the SSD, actually have um, a software that at least at the moment is free. So if you need that, just let me know. I have a video showing how to do that. You can look at my playlist as well um, for general computer repair playlists. And that one has the, um, the option or the video that shows you how to do that. All right, but if you can't find it, let me know and I will send you a link. All right, but um, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, 
please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, but um, yeah, we're just gonna plug this in and boot the Windows uh, installer and that's pretty much it. Plug that in, all right. Should be powering on. Do I need to plug it in? Is their battery like bad? Okay, I don't know, it's not turning on. So I'm gonna go plug it in and then I'll do that. Oh, actually, okay, it is turning on. It's just so quiet because there's no hard drive in it. Okay, anyways, um, we did that. F12, you can see UEFI boot devices. So I'm gonna select this. We're gonna boot from the USB. Oops, <laughs> not that one. That was my um, bio, or sorry. Um, parted magic uh, that's a what do you call um, kind of like a lets me check hardware and things like that it's a Linux all right anyways I'm gonna get the Windows USB installer it's pretty straightforward so I'm not gonna record that plug it in uh, power up the computer press F12 to boot uh, from the drive and then just go through the normal Windows setup but that's pretty much it thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one bye